might be the craziest year for Xbox as a company because coming off of that Xbox developers direct, I was actually pretty positive ab about the, f the future of Xbox and the potential future of what they're going to be doing. I like the games that they showcased. Avowed looked pretty fun. Hellblade 2 looks absolutely awesome. Indiana Jones could be one of my potential games of the year. But there's always that sort of lingering thing in the back of your mind when you start talking about Xbox. We've also been talking about them potentially going a bit more multi-platform, definitely more so than we've seen in the recent console generation or really in every, any console generation. There's never been a manufacturer of consoles who was making consoles but also putting a vast majority of these games available on other places. But it seemed like there was going to be something potentially happening with that when it came to Xbox. Of course, Hi-Fi Rush and Sea of Thieves were all of a sudden popping up as potentially coming to Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 5, and people were quick to sort of dismiss that. A lot of Xbox fans were like, no, that's not happening. That's ridiculous. These are two games that are available only on Xbox, and that's the best way to play them unless you want to play them on PC, but it seems like that was a bit short-sighted. Through some data mining, some information was found about Hi-Fi Rush and some different color schemes for different ads. One of them in a PlayStation Blue and one of them in a Nintendo Switch Red. So the writing has kind of been a bit on the wall with this whole situation. But yesterday, we had potentially one of, one of the biggest stories coming out of this. And it's not necessarily the story itself. It's the people who are talking about this story and saying... Well, yeah, I heard that too. You guys know I'm the king of Xbox and I am an Xbox YouTuber. But when my fellow Xbox brethren start saying, yeah, we've heard this as well, man. So Jez Corden quote tweeted this yesterday. It's happening. I saw that Colt Eastwood also said that this was indeed happening as well. The scale of it is still up for debate, but this is the basic tweet that was lighting Twitter on fire and really the internet on fire. This is coming from Idle Sloth, who's an Xbox news guy. According to a Zenimax employee, Sarah Bond, the Xbox director, will speak in spring to explain the change in Xbox's strategy regarding Hi Fi Rush, Sea of Thieves, and other games going multi platform. Wait for springtime. Sarah Bond will say something. You guys will be fine. Summary of the employee's other remarks. It's metrics driven. Internet discourse isn't considered, but concerns are valid. In response to the considered discourse, if you looked at it from a different angle, there's missing information that you might not see. Allusions to a very concise explanation by Xbox about the situation. A secondary speaker mentions that the other people who are concerned previously are now saying we shouldn't be as concerned as we were. The big three platform holders have the liberty of paving the road and laying the brick at the same time. A lot of conversations around this stuff, it's ongoing, and everything discussed has been covered and or has a clause around it. And then we have a lovely picture of Miss Sarah Bond right there. So basically, what, what this is saying to me is that Xbox is indeed embracing things and embracing a new venture when it comes to video game companies. Because like I said, there's never been a console manufacturer who was actively putting their exclusive titles on other platforms. Now, the size and the scope of this is going to be very important because if games like Halo and, you know, the upcoming Indiana Jones, if those start ending up on other platforms, you almost get to the point of what's the point of the Xbox console. You see, people love their consoles, their console fanboys. There's allegiance to the PlayStation, the Nintendo brand, the Xbox brand. They wage in this war while the companies just sit behind the scenes and laugh about it. Which is pretty much, you know, indicated in this information. Internet discourse isn't considered, but concerns are valid. Meaning that your little console war about your plastic box doesn't matter to Microsoft. Now, do I think this is a good decision or a bad decision? I don't think you can really answer that one way or another because you have to look at what Microsoft is trying to do. I'm not saying that this is necessarily going to work in their favor. It's going to be a rousing success or anything like that. But this shouldn't be really new information to anyone. How long has Phil Spencer been saying, hey, we want to put Game Pass on everything. We want people to be playing our games wherever they go. And really, that's been the mantra of Xbox for a while now. You know, if, if they do day and date launches 
with their exclusive games on the PC as well. You know, it's it's not like a company like Sony where there's usually a year or so of division between the original release and the PC release. It's not like Nintendo who never releases their stuff on PCs. Those two companies definitely rely more on console brand loyalty and console sales. Xbox doesn't seem to care about that. That's why something like Game Pass kind of exists because, you know, they're just trying to get money from people. And if they think that software... And putting their software on other platforms is going to drive growth within the company. I don't think they care about the plastic box. I don't think they care if you buy the game or not. It's about experiencing the game via Game Pass because that seems to be their big major focus. Is it a sustainable focus? Is it something that's a good idea? I don't know. I I, I don't know. I can't imagine that a service like that, you know, is cheap. Or anything like that. You know, it's easy It's easy to keep this up. It's easy to keep optics. It's easy to keep getting these games to come on to Game Pass. But when you make a large acquisition such as Activision Blizzard and you're buying up all these other companies as well and rumored to be buying other companies, you're showing your software prowess with this, your diverse library of games. You could keep them on your console and hope that it drives people to your console or drives them to things like Game Pass on PC. But I feel like Xbox is kind of giving up on the console idea. You know, look at the new console. Look at at the the one that's coming out supposedly this year sometime. The the all-digital version of the Xbox Series X. They're tired of physical media. Uh, You know, Xbox is starting to phase out in storefronts. They want to go into this all-digital age. They essentially want to do what Steam did for PC gaming with console games. And there's a 50-50 chance that it can work. There is a chance that this is a rousing success. And putting their games onto other platforms does generate a lot more revenue, does do a lot better for the company. And then they kind of just phase into like a pseudo Sega, I guess, you know, where they have all these IPs, they have all these franchises, they're putting them on other platforms, but they still have stuff like Game Pass, which might just be in the cloud at that point. Game Pass already has a cloud side to it. I've played a lot of Xbox games to see if I like them via the cloud, and I feel like that's what Xbox wants. Gotta remember, play. remember Crackdown 3, the power of the cloud? Xbox has always been a bit, you know, leaning into this all-digital age, leaning into things where games are more as a service or everything is up in a cloud or in a database or something and you stream it instead of actually owning the game. So you keep going back to that game pass service to get another taste or keep, you know, get another game or something like that. And they keep you within that ecosystem. I don't know though. You know, my, my gut feeling says that this, this is just, they're trying to be like steam for consoles, but I feel like steam worked so well because pc gamers didn't care you know pc games at that time they were coming on like some of these games were coming on like seven discs so it wasn't exactly easy to play these games unless you enjoyed changing out discs all the time you know so for them to sort of phase that out and have a a larger level of integration with the consumer base where everything could just be on the computer itself and everything can download onto your computer, you still kind of have a sense of ownership. There's no sort of resale value on anything like that, but you still kind of have a sense of ownership with these things. But I feel like the PC crowd, I don't know. I feel like they never necessarily cared about the physical stuff as much as the home console crowd does. You know, they're kind of different markets. I know they bleed in together a lot, especially in the modern era, but there are still people out there who prefer to play on a console than play on a PC. I mean, I'm one of them. I'll I'll play a PC game here or there if I have a sponsored video or something like that. But if I have the choice, I'm going to choose the console version. That's just what I prefer. I don't want to mess around with settings. I don't want to mess around with this, that, or the other. So could Xbox be cooking here? Or is the kitchen burning down and they're stuck inside? Because... It seems like this is a reality, folks, you know, with these larger Xbox people saying, yeah, you know, we heard this too. just, you know, decide the matters, the size and the scope. It's like, well, what's the point of buying an Xbox? If you have to wonder, you know, if every game, well, is that just going to come to another platform? You know what I'm saying? If you already own another platform, I don't know. It's it's uncharted territory. 
I'm trying to remain optimistic about it, but I have my doubts. I, I have my doubts about this, but hey, maybe you think this is a bold, smart decision. It is very bold. It is very bold. Let me know what you think of this, though, in the comments section down below. Is this the right move for Xbox to be making? Kind of just trying to put whatever onto whatever and try to make as much money as possible by having all these strong and valuable IPs that people are familiar with? Or do you think this is kind of Xbox leaving the console market and just becoming a Sega, you know, a, a software publisher more so than trying to be involved in the console race? And then you have to think about the downside of that. Because if that's the case, Nintendo and Sony, they're not really competing against each other. And that would mean Sony is pretty much the only dog in the, you know, best 4K graphics department. I don't know, man. I like competition. I think competition is a good thing. Let me know what you think in the comments. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel and you enjoy Xbox content, I'm the guy for you. Hit that subscribe button. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.